Good morning, everyone. It is day one of a four-day exercise rotation that I've been on for the past few weeks. And I would say it's been working pretty well for me, meaning I'm feeling healthy, I'm feeling fit. So I figured I'd share it with you to give you some ideas and potentially motivate you to give it a try or come up with your own variation. So day one is going to consist of me starting upon waking. First thing I did was chug a glass of water. And then I went over and started my fire to warm back up the cabin after it went out last night. And then lay down on the floor here and follow along a 15 minute ab routine. There are hundreds on YouTube, so pick your favorite. I think 15 minutes is a reasonable amount of time. So we knock out the 15 minute ab workout first and then I'm gonna go on a run. So here we go. The typical routine on run days is just to leave from the cabin and run on the roads around there, just the gravel roads. There's a nice hill with a good view at the top of the hill. It's a great workout. Just right from the front door of the cabin. But today, because I'm filming for this video, I figured I would take a little bit of a drive, come out to uh, the closest actual man-made trail that goes along the river here. It's really beautiful. And uh, I would come out here. I try and do that at least once a week, go drive to a trail for one of my runs. That'll be today. So the plan is to run for 30 minutes and then turn around and run 30 minutes back. All right, made it to the turnaround point here. 36 minutes. There's a lot of stopping and starting because of setting up the camera to record this video. So typically it takes me 30 minutes to get here. 2.7 miles. So it's gonna be a little over five miles round trip, which is good. This is a really cool spot right along the river here. The clouds are breaking and it's turning out to be a really nice day. This is awesome. There's some giant trees out here, it's so beautiful. That's a big tree. All right, mission accomplished. Made it back to the truck. Hour and four minutes, 5.3 miles. Now, do a little stretch to finish things off. So as I stretch post run, I wanna share a couple of tips. The past eight or so years that I've been running. These are things learned through experience, but also listening to very experienced runners and not just ordinary runners, but ultra marathon runners. I used to naively think, it, in my opinion, it was a naive thought that people who ran all of the time were actually injuring themselves. Like, man, running as much as you do, it's just pounding your joints and you're beating the crap out of yourself. And by the time you get old, your knees are gonna be messed up, your hips are gonna be jacked up, but spending time around ultra marathons and ultra marathon participants, I met 60, 70, 80 year old people who started and finished and beat me in ultra marathons. And now an ultra marathon is any foot race longer than a marathon, 26.2 miles. So I'm talking about people who have ran 50 and 100 miles travel on their feet at 70 plus years old. And that's not something that you can do just like, oh yeah, I'm 70, I'm just gonna go participate in this race. No, you, that's years and years of running. And so that really kind of destroyed my theory of like, hey,
So consult a professional, but these are my recommendations. They just make sense to me. So as you know, I say all the time on my channel when I'm talking about carpentry, electrical, plumbing, I'm not an expert. Take what I say with a grain of salt, but a lot of the things I learned, it's from the school of real life. These are things that I've done over the course of years. So one of the biggest things I see people doing when they're running and I can spot someone who hasn't gone through the things that I've gone through to, to learn these things. When people are running, a lot of people run and they pound the crap out of their joints because they strike the ground with their feet hitting the wrong spot, in my opinion. Every step that they take, this part of their foot is hitting the ground first and all of their body weight is going to their knees and then their hips and it's just this pound, 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 every step that they take. And what I saw ultra marathon runners doing was striking the ground with the front of their foot first and using their calf muscle as like a spring like to, like suspension on a car or a motorcycle your foot hits the ground and then if you strike the ground with the front of your foot first and you absorb the weight and the impact with your calf muscle and your quads you use your muscles as a shock so that's what i think about every time my foot hits the ground i'm thinking of soft impact using my muscles flexing my leg muscles all like from the calf quad hamstring all the way up it's soften the blow soften the blow soften the blow soften the blow and it takes a long it, it took me a long time to develop that because when you're running it it's happening so fast right <laughs> like how how can i think about you know using my muscles as shocks when it's just like one after another after another it's a slow process and it takes a very long time but if you start running like if you've never run before and you're watching my videos and you see me running it's like hey diego runs i i like diego's videos he's motivated me to get out there and try if you're a beginner start here that's my recommendation start with this method and just think about it that way it just makes sense to me instead of pounding the crap out of your joints and pounding your body pound 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 use your muscles to your advantage and in that process your muscles will grow whenever i run in the city on concrete sidewalks asphalt i start to feel pain in my joints even when i use this method that i just talked about there's something about a uniformly flat and smooth surface that just doesn't jive with my body. I can get used to it and eventually I don't feel as much pain, but I have never felt that kind of pain in all my years of running on trails. And I think it's just because of the non-uniformity, everything's different. You're stepping on a rock, you're stepping on a root, you're stepping on the dirt, and then there might be a stretch of like smooth gravel and then you're back on the dirt and it's ever changing up and down your body is always adapting to it. So I'm not hitting the same part of my muscle with every step. I think that's what it is about the concrete and running on the street. Even if I use that form, my foot is hitting the ground the same exact way for miles on end. So it's just like, I can use that like suspension method where it's like, okay, my muscles taking the impact, taking the impact, taking the impact, but it's the same spot on my muscle, on my calf, on my quad running down the street it's just the same the same the same the same and it makes my body hurt but out here on the trails it's always it's ever changing and it's different so that's why i like the trails plus i mean <laughs> fresh air not breathing exhaust fumes and hearing car horns and people and stopping at crosswalks but i realize not everybody has the ability to go to trails like this so if all you have is your street i still recommend giving running or jogging a try and one last thing about this run that i did today pace played no factor at all in how i thought of this run or this was a good run or a bad run I don't even look at the pace anymore. I give zero craps about how fast or how slow I go. It's about coming out here and moving my legs one foot in front of the other for a good period of time. And I think an hour is good. I think an hour of general exercise is a really good time period. And that's why I did 15 minutes of abs short, and then you can make it 45 minutes of running. So 15 minutes abs, and then 45 minutes running. That's an hour long workout to start out your day or end your day. Everybody's schedule is different or at lunchtime, like whatever, just fit it in. 
Everybody's got an hour. Something I just thought of that I want to add on to my discussion about the uh, ultra marathon runners who are up there in age. And you could say, Diego, yes, those people are running those races and they're finishing, but you didn't say anything about how they felt. They might be absolutely destroyed. And definitely that's the case. Of, of course, anybody would be destroyed and in a lot of pain after running that distance at any age. But especially them, they're probably in more pain than anybody else, or or maybe not because of the experience. I, I don't know, you'd have to talk to one of them. But the basic thing I wanted to add is that the more experience you get and the more you do that, your pain tolerance and your ability to withstand difficult experiences is going to also improve. And so that's the point. Not only do these people that I'm talking about have the ability, they've built their body to be strong to do this crazy physical feat, but their mind is also maybe the biggest factor in this entire equation that I didn't even talk about. Strength in the mind and the ability to withstand difficult things is something that I think we should all strive to work on. And that's what physical exercise does for you. So it's not just about running to get strong legs so that you look hot during the summertime when you go to the beach. That is nice, <laughs> but a hot bod is um, the end result of testing yourself, testing your mind. That's why I've, I always say in my workout videos, challenge your body, challenge your mind. So that was day one of this four day workout cycle that I'm on. We'll see you on day two. I'm sitting here post-workout and I decided I'm just gonna talk at you while I show footage of this uh, chest and tricep workout because I have workout videos on my channel and in those videos I go into detail kind of like I just did about the whole running technique and some encouragement uh, for you about running but in my mind running is completely separate from weightlifting and strength training because Anybody can strap on a pair of shoes or run barefoot. <laughs> Anybody could run. They could jog, they could walk, and I very much encourage you to do that. And I didn't think that there would come a day where me, Diego, would be encouraging people to walk, jog, or run more than I would be encouraging them to weightlift. But if we're being completely honest, the vast majority of people are not going to get a gym membership or purchase their own workout equipment like I have done here. And even if they do those things, even if they get a gym membership and even if they buy their own workout equipment, an even lower percentage of those people are going to use their gym membership or their equipment. So I don't know how useful it would be to go into detail about every exercise that you see me doing here, working my chest and my triceps and talking about technique and breathing like I said, I've done that. Uh, and if you want to learn those things, there are other videos on my channel where I get into those details. But instead of doing that in this video, I wanna tell you this story. When I used to work construction, I lived out in, way out in the middle of nowhere, 45 minutes to an hour away from the closest gym. And I loved weightlifting and working out at the gym so much that I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning drive an hour to the gym, work out for an hour, drive back to where I lived at the tiny house in the middle of nowhere. And then from there, we would drive to wherever our construction site was, which could be you know, an hour to an hour and a half anywhere around the county from the 
tiny house where I live. So weightlifting and working out, this type of working out to me is something that I take very seriously. <laughs> and I was willing to go to those links and I have been willing to go to those links since I was 15 years old. Like wh wherever I find myself in life, whatever situation I'm in, I have to be able to do this from, from my own sanity. I can't just stop. I have stopped a few times for like, I think I went for like a month without lifting weights or seriously working out. And I was like, I, I'm gonna go crazy. I can't not do this for my own sanity. So that's where I'm coming at this from. And I realized that <laughs> the vast, vast majority of people just don't, that they're not wired that way. But I don't know if it was necessary that I'm wired that way. That's probably part of it. If it wasn't weightlifting, it would be something else that I would kind of be drawn to. And then I would, I would like it. And then I would be like, oh, I, I gotta do this <laughs> all the time. But because my dad took me to a military gym when I was 15 years old, and I saw those people in the gym working out from that day, I was like, I want to be like those people. These people are the exception to the rule. When I'm out in society, people don't look like that. <laughs> they're, they're not that healthy. They do not, uh, these people inside this building right here, these are exceptional. And not, that doesn't mean they're perfect people. They still have flaws in, in their mind and in their spirit. And they make mistakes just like everybody else will. But in this one aspect of their life, I think they got that part figured out. And I want to figure that part out for myself. And I want to be like them in that aspect, attribute. So as I sit here and ramble about this, I'm just gonna jump right into day three footage of this four day exercise routine. Mission accomplished. Another workout down. Uh, I'm gonna finish this entire bottle during my workout. Stay hydrated. So by sharing this footage of me working out here at my off-grid cabin in the woods in this garage workshop that I've built uh, for myself. Uh, brain freeze. This can be the spark that ignites the flame, that starts the fire in them to start to figure out this aspect of their life, the physical fitness and physical health aspect of their life. And once you start to put those puzzle pieces together, I think you'll start to see other aspects of your life start to improve. And this is not something that I read in a book or that someone told me this is through life experience. I did all these things and I do all these things that I'm talking about in this video. I do all of them myself, I run, I lift weights, I challenge my body. And I so want to encourage all of you out there watching to strive to do that to the best of your abilities, the best of your abilities, whatever that may mean. With that being said, let's jump into day four, which is going to be maybe the most important day of this four day exercise cycle. Good morning, everyone. It is now day four of this four day exercise routine that I have shared with you. This video is getting kind of long, so why don't we summarize what I've showed you so far. Day one consisted of a core workout and a run. Day two, I did not work out my core. I gave my core a rest. I did a chest and tricep exercise routine. Many people in the fitness world refer to that as a push day because many of the movements that I did during those exercises involved 
pushing things away from my body. On day three, I went back to starting out the day with working my core again. So I gave my core one day of rest and then the next day I worked it out again and then back to the garage to do weightlifting again. But this time it was a pull day. So many of the exercises that I did involved pulling things toward myself. And now day four, is a rest day. So today I will not be holding myself accountable to any type of exercise, physical exercise. Of course I have obligations, I have things to do. So it's not like I'm not gonna do anything and I'm just gonna sleep all day. But as far as holding myself accountable to like, today I need to exercise. Nope, that's not what day four is about. Day four is about rest and recovery. Now with that said, are there many days where I do absolutely nothing? No, there's not. <laughs> so. On day four of this routine, I often like to go for a hike or a walk because it's been two days since I went running and I want to kind of get myself ready for tomorrow, which will be the start of the cycle again. It will be day one. So tomorrow I'm gonna go on a run, but I, I still wanna do something. I think it's good to do something physical every day. So I will go for a walk. I'll try and make it an hour, but if it's only a half hour, is what it is. Or if I can't find the time to do anything, this is my rest day and I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Something that I should really start doing is stretching because that's something that I haven't talked about at all in this video because I don't do it. I don't stretch, I don't do yoga, and I really should. And that's a very important thing that I, I should do and all of us should do. Stretching, yoga, it's very good for you. I can't deny that. I just don't do it. <laughs> it's uh, so boring and uh, I, mm, not my thing, but I should, I should. Nobody's perfect. We all fall short on things and uh, I'm probably gonna suffer for it when I'm older if I don't start now, if I don't just start doing yoga, but well, I can only do so much. So <laughs> I do need to stretch and I probably should, day four should be stretching. Maybe that's what I should do. Instead of going for a walk, you should stretch. I don't know. I should probably stretch a little bit every day if we're being honest, but I don't like stretching. <laughs> now what I am going to share with you is what I eat during these four days and basically for my entire week. I go to town once a week and I go grocery shopping and I fill up my gas cans and I go to the dump to throw away my garbage. So on my town days, I get all of my groceries for the week. I've seen worse, 78 bucks for 17 gallons. The truck was about half full when I pulled up to the station and then I filled up each one of my cans here. And so I'm gonna share exactly what I get at the grocery store, how much it costs me, and how I can use each one of those ingredients throughout different meals through the week. So for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Now most days I do not eat breakfast. I have been intermittent fasting, meaning I skip breakfast, I have lunch, and I have dinner, and I have a snack between lunch and dinner. That's my eating schedule, and I try and eat dinner by seven o'clock p.m. And so then I fast from 7 p.m. until noon of the next day. So I just, I don't eat anything for that period of time. And it's tough at the beginning, if you've never done that before, you get really, really hungry and you feel pretty weak. But I've always enjoyed working out first thing in the morning fasted. That's where I feel the best, because when I'm exercising with fresh food in my stomach and it's bouncing around, I, I wanna puke, I just wanna throw up. So I don't understand how people can eat breakfast and then go work out. It doesn't work for me. So everybody's different though. So uh, this is just me. And these are just ideas and suggestions, showing you what I eat, showing you what I buy at the grocery store, what it costs, that type of stuff. So let's get into it. So last night on my way home, I went grocery shopping and here are the items that I got from my grocery bags. Eggs, tiki masala, kombuchas for beverages, breakfast sausage, rotisserie chicken, cilantro, onion, rice, cheese, bacon, sweet potato, avocado, green onions, and dried fruit mix. Now those items are the staples for all of my meals. And I have receipts here for the last two weeks of groceries. So this most recent trip that you just saw, all of that stuff cost me 
$74.97, so $75 for a week's worth of meals for me, myself. This is in Washington State, USA in November of 2023. And it typically, it's it's been hovering around that cost lately in our economy right now. You can see last week I spent $85 but I got some toilet paper and baby wipes on that trip, so that's why it costs a little bit more. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's $100, but it, it, I would say it averages out, let's just say $80 a week I'm spending on groceries right now. Now, let's get into the meals that I eat during the week. So the process that I go through to create a Mighty Bowl is cooking rice first. And my ratio when I cook rice is two cups of water to one cup of rice. Put that into a bowl. While I wait for the water to boil to cook the rice, I'm gonna make some bacon. Or I'm going to fry some bacon. I'm not gonna make bacon. Once the water is boiling, cover the pot, lower the heat down to very low and set a timer for 12 to 15 minutes. I like to use chicken as the meat for this meal. Last night when I came back from the grocery store, I unpackaged the rotisserie chicken that I bought and I shredded it and put it into a glass container. So I'm gonna open that glass container and then use a pair of scissors to just chop up that chicken into smaller pieces. Just go through, chop, chop, chop. Okay, I think the rice is done, but let's confirm here. Uh, hmm, yeah, it's done. Gonna add some butter to that. Let the butter soften up a little bit, and then I'll add some of this chicken and some of this. And then I'll just keep mixing that until the ratio looks right. So right now there's still a lot of just plain rice in there. So I need to add some more stuff, mix it up again, check it again, add some more stuff, mix it up, check it again. All right, that is well mixed. Now it's time to add it to my plate and then add all the toppings. So this is a pesto dip, I guess you call it. A lot of flavor in a little bit. Cheese. And I chopped up the cilantro earlier today for lunch, so that's just leftover cilantro. This is not my recipe. I stole it from a local restaurant called The Mighty Bowl. It's a really fantastic concoction of ingredients, and it's one of my favorite meals in the world. The first time I went to that restaurant and I got a Mighty Bowl, it blew my mind. So I do my best to recreate it, but I often fall short because there's nothing like the original, but this is my version of a Mighty Bowl. And when they serve it at that restaurant, it comes in a bowl. I believe the rice is at the very bottom and then they kind of stack it. As you stick your fork down, you kind of eat it in layers and everything combines. And by the end, you've got uh, this crazy mixture and you combine all those flavors and it's just, ah. Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> bacon. How could I forget the bacon? Yes. Okay, now it's complete. Oh my gosh, look at that, even better. This kind of tastes like a chicken curry. And then you got this cheese here. There's a spinach with this sauce on top, bacon. Get a little bit of salsa, pesto. Every bite, cilantro, you can just combine. Mm. And just let the flavors combine in your mouth and in your taste buds. My goodness. Oh, I got so excited to sit down and eat. I forgot my drink over there. Oh man, good stuff. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Almost done here. By the way, the lighting got different because I switched over from the gas generator power to the battery power. And once I hook up to the batteries, I like to just have lights on in the room that I'm using to 
conserve the battery life because as many of you know, I am off the grid up here. So this is one of my staple meals here and it is sweet potatoes. Actually, these are yams, but same difference. And I love this meal because it is super duper simple. I simply wash the sweet potatoes or yams in the sink. Oh, before I do board into reasonable size slices. That's a good one. It's about a quarter inch, quarter to a half inch, maybe three eighths. <laughs> and then I'll put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and after the salt and pepper, I just stick Now what I'm gonna do is flip all of these over, hot. Ah. And then back in the oven they go for another 20 minutes. Yes! Oh yeah. They're done. Turn that off. Okay, so put down a nice bed of spinach first. Heavy on the spinach. And then avocado. I like to use this cut and scoop method. Scoop, scoop, nice and pretty there. And then we get some of these taters on here. Taters, taters. Oh, this is gonna be good. Okay, it's a different day, but I'm making my sweet potato dish again. And this time I'm gonna add the green onions and some bacon. So while that goes for 20 minutes, I'm gonna cut all that stuff up here on my cutting board. You always wanna wash all your veggies before you cut them up, just to get that surface level dirt, germs, whatever, off of there. Doesn't mean you're gonna completely eliminate every single bad thing that could possibly be on this, but it doesn't hurt. off with the green onions you could take your knife and cut right down the middle just like that like that and then cut it into the smaller pieces that's a big time saver I'm putting the bacon on now but I should have had this going before I started chopping up the greens over there. That's another time saver. Having multiple things going at one time. So the sweet potatoes are in the oven right now. The bacon's gonna be frying here, and then I'll have my greens chopped up and ready to go. And order of operations is important too because I just wash my hands after I handle the bacon. You don't wanna put your fingers on the bacon and then touch it to the vegetables, so you gotta think about that. That's why I should have done that first, then wash my hands in, but anyways. Okay, those are about ready to flip now. So I like to turn this off, let it stop splashing everywhere, then take the lid off to minimize the mess. And then I'm gonna throw my, the white end of the green onions. So the green onions have this green end and then the white end. I cut that off and throw in the whites with the bacon to let those saute after the first side has cooked. It's really, really tasty to have those sauteed or So right as I put the green onions with the bacon, my sweet potatoes are ready to flip now. Back for another 20 minutes. So the bacon and the green onions are done. While the sweet potatoes cook for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to make a custom topping sauce with just mayonnaise and Tabasco. Mix the two together. And I think I'll add some salt and pepper as well. And cilantro. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm back to where I was <laughs> last time I made sweet potatoes, but this time I'm gonna add all the extra goodies. So this time I'm gonna add cheese. I'm gonna add the green onions as a garnish. I'm gonna add the bacon. What I like to do is grab it with the tongs and then use scissors to cut it into little pieces. And see all these green onions that cooked in there with that bacon grease? Oh yeah. Add that on there. And then top it off with my special sauce here. And here's my avocado to finish it off. And that is a much tastier iteration of this meal. A Little bit more work chopping up the onions and the cilantro and cooking the bacon and all that stuff, but it's worth it. At the same time, I've got all of this leftover, leftover cilantro, leftover green onions leftover bacon and i can put that all into one of these leftover containers and then i'll have another meal ready to go this would taste good any time of the day but it tastes especially good after a workout first thing in the morning you're fasted you fasted all night and you just pushed your body worked out broke a sweat you're feeling really hungry and you fill your belly with this realness this deliciousness real food Mm. Oh boy. Mm. And then I like to add this sriracha mayo and some barbecue sauce. Yes, sir. And that is a mighty fine meal there. At least I think so. It looks mighty fine to me. And now I shall feast while I edit the video that you're watching right now. Some real is, uh, inception level dang. stuff going on here. <laughs> a video within a video. Mmm. Well, yeah, spinach. Um, I like it. So here's another staple meal, probably the most staple in my repertoire, and that is the ground beef taco. Just like that, I'm ready for another meal. Tasty kombucha drink here. Ah, cheesy ground beef, avocado, spinach, Tabasco, ah, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's another meal example. I've got a layer of spinach on the bottom breakfast sausage, avocado, eggs, and cheese. And then some yogurt on the side. And the cycle starts again, people. I just made it to the shed here in the woods. Same trail that I ran back on day one. Now it's day one again. It's a little bit more wet today, but no excuses. You can do it, people. Give it a shot. Come up with your own variation. Switch up the weightlifting days. Switch up the running days. Don't weightlift at all. Focus on stretching. Focus on yoga. Go for walks, whatever it means to you to step up to that next level from where you're at right now. Just aim higher, aim higher. And you're probably gonna fall short. When you aim high, you don't reach those goals. But if you aim high, you're gonna go farther than you would have if you set the bar low for yourself. So I realize for a lot of you, what I just did for these four days, way too high. The bar's way too high. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to do that right away. Or maybe you will. Maybe some of you are already 
fitness fanatics and what I just did looks weak to you. <laughs> to a lot of people, this, this is, I mean, this is nothing. Just aim higher, all right? That's what I encourage you to do because if nobody else believes in you, I believe in you. And I know that you can do it. See you on the next one.